So the first thing I like to talk to people about is the, are the motions of the sky. Uh, here's our Earth in orbit around the sun. And uh, as you know, it takes a year to go around the sun and we have the four seasons there. And uh, every, every three months uh, we have a different season. The night sky is essentially when we look away from the sun. So uh, in December on the left-hand side, uh, all the nighttime is on the left-hand side there. All the stars on the left-hand side uh, away from the earth, that is what we'd see in, the, in December. Six months later, when we're uh, in June, uh, notice that uh, all of the winter stars that are over on the left-hand side, we'd now have to look through the sun to see them. Uh, and on the right-hand side, on the nighttime, uh, there's a whole bunch of brand new stars. So we're always seeing new stars in the sky. And this is a, another uh, general look at, uh, at what it would uh, be like. The December stars uh, over here, uh, like the bull and the, the, the twins and whatever, these are winter stars. And we see them every winter. And then over here, the summer stars, like uh, the scorpion or the archer or the goat, we see them in summer. And we see the same stars in the sky seasonally every year. Standing on the Earth, uh, it might look like the sky is moving. We see the sun rise and set every day. We see the stars move across the sky. But of course, it's because the Earth is rotating uh, that we see this motion. But when we're standing out in a field, it appears that the stars are all rotating around a single star. And that star is Polaris. And it's, all, it's because Polaris, by coincidence, is just aligned with the axis of the Earth. If you think of the uh, axis of the Earth of a, like an axle on a bicycle wheel and all the spokes of the wheel move around that, Polaris just happens to be in that position coincidentally. So we call Polaris the North Star. So as we see the sky move, again, the Earth is turning, but it looks like the stars are rising. We see them rise in the east and reach a high point and set in the west. And they all seem to be moving around this one point uh, where Polaris is. So when we're looking at the Big Dipper, and uh, again, these two stars point to the North Star and the Little Dipper, if you continue a little bit more, you'll see a W in the sky. That's Cassiopeia. Uh, so these constellations, like Cassiopeia and the Great Bear and the Little Bear, uh, they're essentially star pictures. They, they're made up of uh, animals, people, uh, various uh, things, uh, objects. Uh, and uh, these constellations, they have a history that goes back, uh, you know, thousands of years. People have been uh, looking at these, uh, these pictures in the sky and actually making stories up about, uh, about constellations. One of the brighter and easier to recognize constellations is the constellation of Orion. Orion is a winter constellation, so we've been watching it uh, over the past uh, five months or so from, uh, from early autumn through the winter. And uh, this Orion is uh, a hunter. And uh, I must admit, some of the constellations are a bit of a stretch. They don't really look like uh, what they're supposed to. Uh, Cassiopeia is supposed to be a queen uh, sitting in her chair. Uh, and you might uh, have you might have no problem no find it very easy to see a queen sitting in a chair there. Uh, I tend to see either a W or an M. Uh, but Orion looks like a, a hunter, and uh, the hunter here here are his shoulders and uh, his uh, his feet and uh, his belt. These these three bright stars, and he actually has a sword hanging down. Um, and uh, he's actually the, over here. Just off the picture is Taurus the bull, and the story is that he is uh, he's fighting Taurus the bull. So one way to uh, to find your way around the night sky is to get a star chart. Uh, one thing you can get is uh, what's called a a planisphere or a star finder, and this essentially shows the night sky. But you can dial in the date and time because because the Earth is turning and because the Earth is moving around the Sun, the sky is different every hour. Uh, but if once you have your uh, your star finder uh, and say it's nine o'clock on December thirtieth, this is the sky that you would see, 
and you'll notice that the Big Dipper is just above the northern horizon, and there's the Little Dipper, and there's Cassiopeia. And in the south here, this is the, the southern sky, this is essentially the horizon here. So here's Orion over here, so you'd want to turn the, the Star Finder upside down to see Orion and Gemini and, and the winter constellations. There are star charts online that you can download, uh, and also there are planetarium programs uh, that you can download. So the, some of them are free, and uh, you can get use them for the same thing to find your way around the sky. What is in the sky tonight? The nice thing about the planetarium programs is they show the positions of the moon and the planets uh, on a, a certain day. Uh, this only shows the stars because the moon moves daily and the, and the planets are always moving. Uh, so you need some software to see that. Well, what is there to look at in the night sky? Uh, there are different types of astronomers. Uh, I think a beginner, a beginning astronomer, we call just an arm, armchair astronomer or a, a casual observer. Uh, then you get into these active observers and really serious observers who are out every night. And you even have some amateurs who are doing research. Uh, and providing uh, information for professional astronomers. But let's just, let's be armchair astronomers today and let's think about what are some of the things we can see when we look into the night sky? Well, there's actually quite a lot. Uh, here's the list that I came up with. Certainly you're gonna be able to see stars um, and you can see all the planets out to Saturn. Those are what we call naked eye planets, things that you can see with your naked eye. Certainly the moon, uh, and the moon is, uh, very easy to see. Hopefully it'll clear by, uh, by when it gets dark tonight. A little bit, looks a little cloudy right there now. But the moon, I saw the moon last night, uh, a nice crescent moon. Um, you'll see constellations. You'll see stars and, and constellations. You might see the odd meteor or shooting star. We'll talk about those in a minute. Uh, Northern lights are a little bit more rare. We'll talk about them in, in a minute as well. Comets are very rare. But uh, there's the odd comet that you can see with your naked eye. It doesn't happen very often. Uh, you can see man-made uh, satellites. Uh, the International Space Station is very bright. You just need to know when it comes over, and there are websites that will, uh, will tell you that. And then out beyond our solar system, there are star clusters and nebulae and galaxies. They're kind of tough to see from, uh, very difficult to see from the city. But if you're outside the city, away from the light, you might be able to see them with your, uh, your eye. Once you add binoculars or telescopes, uh, then you see more stars, you see all the planets out to Neptune, and you see a lot more uh, objects outside the, uh, the solar system. So when you're getting started, how, how do I get started in this thing? Um, well, again, naked eye is, is good, but uh, you know, people who, who are interested in amateur astronomy, uh, and they ask, they, they, they approach me, they'll say, well, I want to get a telescope. What, what kind of telescope should I get? And I'll, t I'll, say, I'll tell you that, that when you're starting out, the last thing I think you should do is consider buying a telescope. Uh, certainly, uh, you know, uh, join a, an astronomy club and meet other people who are, uh, have similar interests. Uh, but if you're going to invest in anything, I would invest in binoculars. Binoculars are a great way to start. Uh, they're easy to manage and you can see a lot uh, more with binoculars than with your with just your eye. But then I would get a star chart and planisphere and then a flashlight with a red filter. And the reason you have a red filter is that when you're out, um, say in, in a dark area and you're looking at, uh, at a star chart, a white flashlight is really blinding, especially when your eyes get, get used to the dark and you don't want to lose your night vision. So if you have a red filter on the flashlight, flashlight uh, then it'll save your eyesight and it'll be easier to look at the chart and then look up in the sky. 